Good morning. Today we are going to create an input file for a mechanical analysis on a 2D frame based on 2D beam finite elements. And to save some time, we start at a point where we have already introduced four points, four nodes in the plane. You see the four nodes here. And if we edit the script, we see that this is to prepare a frame which has a span of six meters and a height of three meters. On these nodes, we have to create some lines. Add line. And we have a start point and an end point. And the choice of this point is important because it will define the direction of the local axis x of the beam finite element. The second line is from point two to point three. And the third line is here for the column on the right, Q. I want to check the direction of my lines. I double click here, all geometry options. And here in normal and tangent, I click and drag to the right, release the mouse, and I see the direction of my lines. So I can remove that from my picture. And that's it for the geometry. It's very simple in that case. Now we have to add sapphire properties. And we have properties that can be added on the nodes. Let's start, for example, for that node. We double click. And we have different properties. And these properties that we will select now will be applied only to the point number two. What are these properties? We can add a spring on that node. We could add mass. We could add oblique support for displacements or rotation. Same constraint block contrain or load. And here we want to apply, let's say, a concentrated load. It will be multiplied by the function F1, and we put an horizontal force of 1000 Newton. Add update. And we can check that the load has been applied here correct. I may want to remove the labels now, which are not really needed. We may want to add now some properties on these two nodes, the boundary conditions. We can do it distinctly for that node and then for that node, but we can save time by creating a physical group, and that will be a group of points. So first of all, we select a name that would be support, for example, and now we can select the points, one here and one here. Okay, E for and the selection. And now the properties, the same as the one we added on that node, can be added, but they will be added simultaneously on these two nodes. So what we want to apply here is, for example, a block constraint, and we block the direction x, the direction y, and maybe the rotation. Add update. And we can view the block, and they are here and here as well. Now we have to apply the sapphire properties on the lines. And let's start by the beam, which is the single curve that will have the properties we are going to choose now. So I select the beam. And the properties that we can apply are block constraint, same, TEM and materials, relaxation, uniformly distributed load, trapezoidal load, hydrostatic load, mass on the beam. This would be for a truss. But we are going to start with this. It's the new material definition. We don't have any material at that stage. So new material. The first material we will choose maybe would be concrete, normal concrete. And we select silicon ETC, for example. That's concrete. The strength, uh, let's make it a little bit stronger, 40 megapascal, and we have to give a name, and the name would be concrete M. Add, and I click twice. So this is the list of my material. I have to add another one, that would be carbon steel, and for that section, it would be steel EC2EN, 
500 megapascal of yield strength. It's okay. I give a name and the name here I would choose steel EC 2M. This is my name. Okay. I double click here. And now this is the list of the materials that I have defined at that stage. I need another one that's also a carbon steel, but now this will be steel EC3 EN that I will need. I know that for the column. The strength is 355 megapascal. Okay, and I give it the name steel EC3M. Add update. And this is my list of materials. I come back here, and now I will choose the name of the TEM file and the materials. So I have to remember the name of the TEM file. That was 2D thermal.tem. And the list of materials, I have to know that the first material in that section was concrete. So here it will be my material concrete M, and then with a space, the name of the second material, and here this is the name of my material, steel EC2M. Add update. I can maybe add another property that would be a uniformly distributed load, maybe multiplied by the function F load, and let's give a load of 1000 newton per meter on the beam. I can do some verification. Material, okay, this is the name of the TEM, the name of the two materials among that list. I can view the load. Here I see my node load and I see the distributed load. We may now want to uh, allocate another property to the beam. So we select it again, and the property might be, for example, relaxation. And on the node 1, that means on the left, because we know the direction of the line, we don't want to relax the local displacement x. We don't want to relax y, but we relax the rotation. So we want the bending moment at the end of the, the beam to be equal to 0. We impose the same condition on the right side of the beam. Add update. We can view the relax and we see that this beam has been given some relaxation. We now come to the columns and because both columns will have the same properties, we may use a physical group add curve so the name this physical group would be columns and we select this column and this column e to end the selection now what properties can we add the same as those we added on the beam but here we will just define the name of the TEM file and the materials. So the name is HEB400. TEM, and the material is my material steel EC3 EM. Add update. And if I view the materials, I now have my HEB400 TEM and my steel EC3M material applied on these two beams, which are part of this physical group. I check the SAFIR properties, general information that I tuned already. So I gave for the name of the input file the same name as the name of the geo file, frame 2D. I want to the calculation to stop when maximum displacement is one meter. This is the precision, ng equal to in the beam. I have thermal elongation. This is my time print. Let's maybe reduce it every second. I do a static calculation with pure Newton Raphson and a comeback of one second. And I start with a time step of four seconds. In the print, I print by default 
the reactions and the internal forces. And that's okay. Before I can create the input file, I have to do the mesh, of course, mesh, it's 1D. And I can check here what has been created. 13 node and 16 finite element. That's okay for me. I think I can create the input file and the input file has been created, which I can check here. This is the input file. I can open it, have a look, quick look. Seems to be okay. I can close it and I can try to run Saphir this Saphir shell. Here is the executable. I add the file, add, and I run it, and it's running. Of course, it's an academic example. I did not check too much the exact values, but it seems to be working. I can check that quickly by diamond. I will open the file, file, open, in tutorial frame 2d here are my nodes my elements my supports the loads f1 here is my concentrate load here is my distributed load and maybe i can check the bending moment distribution after four seconds let's go to 20 seconds and i see that the beam has been relaxed it is simply supported on the columns and i have some bending moments here due to this horizontal force so this seems to be what i expected thank you very much